Hey everyone, I'm going to show you how to back up your photos on your Android cell phone. You need two things. You need lots of storage, which I use a NAS, a network attached storage device, and you need a program called SyncThing. And for a third option, I use a cloud backup solution because as they say, one backup copy is not really a backup. Let's take a look. I'm using Debian, so I'm going to type sudo apt install SyncThing. And then we'll install it. And that's it. All done. Now we're going to git clone my repository. The link is in the description. And we're going to grab the systemd file that we'll use for the service. It's that sync thing at user.service. So we're going to rename that user to the username that's on the server. In my case, Scott. And then we're going to copy it to Etsy systemd system. And then we're going to run the command sudo systemctl enable dash dash now to enable it now and sync thing at scott.service. So now this will enable sync thing and it will start it up when the system reboots. Now we are up and running, so let's go to the web address. We're going to go to the local host since it's running on this server and we're going to go to port 8384 and we can ignore that warning and we're going to Disable usage reporting, it's up to you if you want to send your information out so they can improve the product. And then we're going to go into settings and you can change the device name. And you can go through all the different configuration options. And if you go into the GUI, you can set a username and password, makes it a little bit more secure. And then you can use HTTPS for even more security. And you always got to change to the dark theme, of course, to relieve our eyeballs. And we'll log back in. And that looks much better. And now we're going to hop on the phone. And we're going to install the Sync Thing app in the Play Store. I already have it installed, so I'm going to open it up. And I already have my SyncThing server installed or set up, but I'm going to set up another device. And if you click on the QR, you can scan the QR code, or you can type in the device ID, but it's pretty long. So if you're able to scan the code, that is definitely helpful. So I'm going to go ahead and scan the code. There we go. Fills in the device ID. Perfect. And then we can name it doesn't matter what you what name you create this is this is all for your reference and you can go through and set up the other options but the defaults are fine and now we have the device set up when we add the device it's going to pop up on the sync thing server prompting you if you approve this device so you can either add the device or if you're not sure which device this is since it is on a public network you can just choose ignore so we know this is our Pixel 6 Pro, so we're going to add the device. And then you can see the device ID and the device name, and you can rename the device if you'd like. And there's different options under sharing. You can go through those on your own. And under advanced, there are also other options that you can go through on your own. But for the most part, defaults are okay, so we're just going to click on save. And our device will show up now under remote devices. And it'll take a little while, but it will eventually connect. So we're going to go ahead and create a folder for us to start storing our photos and syncing them to the server. And under folders, on your phone, we're going to add a folder. And you can name it whatever you'd like. And then you're going to browse to the folder where it contains your photos. Under most Android phones, it's DCIM, the DSIM folder. I'm just using a test folder here. And yes, we want SyncThing to be able to access our photos so it can sync them. And there's other different options here. I'm selecting the test server because the other server is a different instance. And for the folder type, we want to send only. Send and receive means if we delete files on the server, then it's going to delete on our phone. And we definitely don't want that. So send only means if we send files to the SyncThing sync, sync server and then our script deletes those files for cleanup, it's not going to remove them off our phone. And watch for changes. So the app will watch for any changes to the folder, and if it sees a new change, it will send that photo. So we're getting re almost real-time backups of our photos. And we'll save that. And then back on the server, we'll get a pop-up to approve the new folder. And there it is. Everything checks out. 
it's my pixel folder temp so we can add or ignore again so we're going to add and then here we can change the label or the name and the folder path where we want this to be stored so we need to put it in the path where we have the most storage since we're going to be backing up all of our photos and then we're sharing it with this pixel 6 pro and file versioning there's different file different file versioning you can do you can go through that and you can select some patterns and different advanced options and for the folder type we want to make sure that it is receive only which again we don't want to send out any changes to the phone. We just want to receive the photos for backup. And you could go through all the other different options. And file pull order. You could change it to newest first. So you make sure that you get your newest photos that you've taken backed up first to make sure that they're good to go. And then once everything looks good, click save and we'll start syncing. And this will take a while, so I'll speed this up. And there we go, all done. We are synced. So now any new photos that we take, it will sync to the backup server. And now we'll go through the two options that I have. I have 100 gigs dedicated for photos. So then we'll go through the script, but the script will take those photos and it will organize it onto my SAM by date, by month. And then I have another script that will take those photos once a night and it will put it on my cloud drive and then my cloud drive will automatically sync to the cloud. So now I have two backups of my photos. I have my photos on my phone and then I have photos in the on my sand and then I have photos in the cloud. But here's my GitHub repository for this project. And I have the two scripts that I was talking about. Let's go through the copy photos script first. So I do have my 100 gigabyte disk. So the sync thing application will sync to that 100 gigabyte disk. And then every night this copy photos task will run and it will take those photos and it will move it to my NAS and then organizes it by year and by month. And then it will delete the photos off the 100 gigabyte drive. That's why I only need 100 gigs. And that is also why for the folder sync, we want it to be receive only because if we delete from that drive and the folder is for send and receive, it will delete it off my phone, which I don't want to do. So let's go through this script. It's going to be a really high level but it just takes the directories that I have on my photos and it'll take the file name. At first it'll do pictures and it'll take the file name and it'll format the date. So then I can check to see if the folder for this year and for this month exists, then we'll just copy it to the folder. If not, it will create the folder. And then once it creates it, it'll copy it. And then it'll do the same thing for my videos. And, and if there are any pictures or videos that were copied, it will send me an email letting me know what was copied and then we'll go back and the sync photos is basically the same thing it'll take from the drive and it'll copy it to my cloud drive and then that way once the cloud drive receives those files it'll sync to the cloud and that's where I get my two copies and that is basically it that is my setup for copying photos off of my phone so if I lose my phone my photos are all backed up and I can get them back. Now I have just been mentioning photos this whole time, but you could do that for anything on your phone if you want to keep your if you want to back up your documents or your downloads. It's useful for anything. But that is all. Please uh, leave me a comment. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to Linux or if this all seemed a little overwhelming, you can watch my video on the key areas to concentrate on learning Linux. That's it. Take care.